the cloud. Okay, so welcome everybody. My name is Ilham. I am a team leader, I'm part of the Pinnacle branch, but in the MacArthur region. Um, so I've been a consultant for seven years and just a team leader only since December this year. Um, we're only a small group, so I'm hoping that we can be a bit interactive. Feel free to come off mute and ask me questions um, or just um, put whatever questions you have in the chat. The only thing is when I share, a, when I share my screen, which is what I'm going to have to do tonight, um, you will, I won't be able to see the questions. So then I'll have to come after, the, after I finish sharing my screen, then I'll get back to the, the questions again. Otherwise, if someone feels comfortable reading someone else's question, then feel free to do that too, please. All right, so I'm just going to share my screen. And if I go too quickly, my South African accent is still strong. <laughs> if I go too quickly, please feel free to stop me. And um, I will try and speak a little slower. Okay, so today's workshop is recipe conversion. And we are going to be learning how to convert traditional recipes to Thermomix method. Okay. So I hope you guys can everyone see that. Um, the screen, yeah. Oh, the cute puppy. Oh, so you've got, you know, he's gorgeous. He or she? <laughs> Him? Okay. All righty. So um, the first tip to recipe conversion is that you cook the book. I was always taught, I was taught that seven years ago. And the, but when I say the book, I mean the recipe book that you got um, when you purchased your, either your team six or your team five. Um, or the, so the, the basic cookbook is on, um, you have the book itself or you have um, it saved on the Thermomix itself. It's already preloaded on there. So um, what I recommend is cooking all the recipes in the basic cookbook because once you become familiarized, um, uh, familiar with the recipes, it becomes easier to understand steps and that way you eventually understand what um, step to use or what um, time or speed or temperature to use when you're um, cooking a particular ingredient. Okay, so the more you use the Thermomix by cooking the recipes, the more you'll um, become fam um, familiar with the cooking in the Thermomix. And so now and then what I also suggest you do is actually not cook guided. So go into your cookbook and then choose a recipe. For example, I've just opened up onto the Bolognese recipe and it actually tells you what ingredients to get ready. And then it says, Place celery, garlic, carrot, onion, and mixing bowl. Um, sorry, an onion into the mixing bowl and chop three seconds, speed seven. So then that way you remember next time you're trying to do another recipe. Oh, I've got to go three seconds, speed seven, to chop your um, onion and that sort of thing. Okay, so what I know with myself when I follow recipes blind, like the guided recipe, it's obviously blind blindly because you know how to do. Like the, the steps are there for you. You don't actually have to follow each step or think about what the next step is. All you've got to do is read what's happening and then just go next. So if you're actually following a recipe book like this, then you have to set your thermomix, those settings um, in the time, the temperature and the speed yourself. Do you know what I mean? So, the, the, and if you do it manually like that, you, you start to, it starts to become easier with you because you start to recognize what settings to use. Okay, so the second tip I have is there is within this basic cookbook a chapter called resources. Okay, it looks like this. And in the resource chapter, um, you will find things like it's on page 309, um, starts on page 309. You'll, have, you'll find chopping functions, which starts with grating. So there's two pages worth of grating, and it actually gives you the ingredient the amount, um, like the quantity uh, um, to, to weigh into the bowl, and then the time, so two to three seconds and speed for four to um, four and a half. So if you know um, your ingredient that you want to grate or crush or mill or blend, then you can just find the ingredient in this resource section. And that's how you'll know what the quantity is um, to weigh in there and, and what speed to use um, when you're chopping and the time to use too. We also they, they also within that resource chapter besides grating, they like I mentioned before they've got grinding, milling, chopping, mincing, crushing, and they've also got steaming functions. So it tells you in there to place 500 grams of room temperature water or broth into the mixing bowl, and steam the stated time next to the ingredients that you've got there, and varoma temperature and speed one. 
Um, it also says to add, if you want to extend the cooking time beyond 30 minutes, you've got to add 250 grams of water to each additional 15 minutes. So that, so these, like you, you can read these um, pages in your own time, but this actually helps you with what ingredient you need to use. Um, if you, whatever ingredient you have and tells you the amount, so the quantity, the time, and then the temperature and the speed to use it. Obviously, with steaming, it will always be um, Verona. Okay, so that's the so that's the in the in the basic cookbook. It's under resources. In the Team Five book, it will be under the basics chapter. It's under this chapter. So re, Team Six resources at Team Five basics. Okay. So the third um, biggest tip that I can give you is to speak to your consultant. Your consultant has a wealth of knowledge they know oh, somebody's asking me sorry somebody's asking a question oh no still the old chat uh, earlier okay so um they they uh, most of them would know how to convert recipes if they don't know how to convert recipes especially if they are a newer consultant then they, they can contact their team leader and the team leader can help them um um, convert the recipe for you. So I usually get, uh, if my customer has a recipe, she doesn't know how to convert it, she still get um, not really comfortable with converting recipes. I just ask her to send me or him to send me the entire recipe and then I'll just convert it to them. And then eventually with practice, it becomes easier. Okay, so you ask your consultant for help. Number four is to search cookie do for similar recipes. So, so on cookie do, Today, for example, we use, we're making something called jollof rice, which is what Megs asked me to um, convert today, the, the lady that was on here previously. Oh, somebody's in the waiting room. So um, in, the, um, in Cookie Do, you'll find similar recipes um, to what you would um, traditionally cook on the soap top. So you find that recipe and then you convert um, using that recipe as a guide, okay? And then number five is don't be afraid to reorder recipe steps. So, for example, if you have in a recipe that says to traditionally you would chop the um, an onion and then it says to you to peel the potatoes and then it says chop, um, chop the garlic or that sort of thing. Um, what I would do is peel the potatoes first we're using the potato peeler and then removing um, the potatoes and then doing the onions and the garlic and whatever. Do you know what I mean? That sort of thing. Um, that's when I, what I mean by reordering um, recipes. If you're reading from a, like another recipe and you want to convert it to a Thermomix. Okay. And number six, make sure you never go over um, the maximum um, capacity. So that's for safety reasons. Your quantities should always be um, 2.2 liters, not to exceed the maximum capacity of um, the mixing bowl. Number seven, combine steps where possible. So, um, for example, things like if you need to make things like sauces or batter for cakes, all the ingredients can often be all added into the mixing bowl at the same time and then just um, stirring or mixing it up. And then Number eight is save yourself the cheers. I added that in there because for things like onion, garlic, chili, where when you're cutting it and it can burn your eyes, just chuck it all in there together and um, chop it up. You can actually add the oil at the same time because half the time when you're chopping the onions up, you've got to um, cook it in the oil um, too anyway. So you put your onion in there, you put your garlic, you put your oil, your chili, if, if your um, recipe requires chili, and then just five seconds speed seven, um, usually three to five seconds speed seven usually works for, um, for that. So save yourself the tears. Okay, and then number nine is trial and error. So trial and error, meaning just convert the recipe, have fun with it. If you um, test it out and if it didn't work, then obviously um, change it up and then try it again. So it works with trial and error. That was why I've added that in there. Does anybody have any questions? With because I know somebody came, um, not Margaret, um, Michelle. Michelle, you came in a little bit um, later than everyone. I'm sorry we we started. Um, if you have any questions uh, for me to go, if you want me to just repeat any of these that you've missed, I'm happy to do that for you. Otherwise, I'm going to go on to the next um, slide. Okay, so now it says to let um, let's put 
what we've just learned into practice. So there's two ways that you can convert your recipe. Uh, so you always have a record of it. Um, the first way is what we're doing today. It's in recipe community. So when I convert my recipe, I want to save what I've done so that I can go back and do, use that recipe again. And so I either save it in recipe community or I can save it in created recipes in Cookie Do. Um, Kate uh, um, is going to be covering created recipes next week. So today I'm just going to be concentrating on um, recipe community. Okay, does it, has anybody um, had a look? Yes, Michelle, there is a recording. Um, I'm recording right now, so you can watch it um, later. Um, has, does anybody use recipe community by any chance? Nobody? No? Okay. Okay, so this is the recipe. I hope you guys can actually make out what that says because the font was really, really small today. Um, uh, this is what Meg sent me. It's jollof rice. Um, and the ingredients is two medium tomatoes, roughly chopped, one, um, a half a medium scotch bonnet uh, or habanero pepper, um, or chili at least, with the stem removed, half medium onion, three small red bell peppers, uh, which is red small capsicum, um, and then half a cup of vegetable oil, um, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of curry powder, one and a half teaspoons of hot ground chili pepper, um, so something like cayenne pepper, one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, one tablespoon plus um, a heap teaspoon of onion powder, bay leaves, um, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, one tablespoon of dry thyme, and then two and a half cups of medium grain rice. So in the preparation, it says in a blender, combine tomatoes, scotch bonnet, pepper, um, and onions, um, and puree it, pour out half of the puree into a bowl and set aside, and then add bell peppers to the puree, remain, um, to the puree remaining in the blender and pulse until smooth, then add the mixture that was set aside and stir to combine. Heat, um, heat the vegetable oil in a large pot over medium heat, add blended vegetables along with the salt, curry powder, ground chili pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, bay leaves, ginger, thyme, and bring the mixture to boil. So we, it says to stir in the rice um, until well mixed and then reduce the heat to low. Cover the pot and let cook until rice is al dente. About 45 minutes, check after 30 minutes if the rice is sauce logged. Remove the lid to cook off the excess sauce. If the rice seems dry, stir in one to two cups of water, allow the rice at the bottom of the pot to char a bit to infuse it with a smoky flavor. Okay, so with the TM6, you can get that um, caramelization on the bottom of the bowl, but it's not gonna be like, um, I don't know if you guys know, I, I was speaking to Mix earlier, I'm not sure if you guys were listening to us. Um, so with certain rice dishes, um, you want that sort of crispness to the rice at the bottom of a bowl um like paella and um i don't know what other recipe and there's a lebanese um, rice dish i think like mansa that also wants that crispiness down the bottom of the bowl you're only going to get you're not going to get um a lot of that um at the bottom of the, the bowl you're only going to get a little bit of um caramelization but you're not going to get that hard crisp um sort of layer um but let's get started let me show you um what i do next so i'm going to share another screen Okay, so this is, for those of you that don't know, this is recipe community. And so what we do here is we share, uh, recipe community is a um, sort of database that all um, consultants, um, chefs, like Thermix ambassadors, um, customers, um, we upload recipes, um, our recipes that we've converted um, to cook in the Thermix. Um, so, and then we can share and we can um, see what everyone else shares and that sort of thing. So I, I've logged in and um, so that's why it says my name up the top there. And so if you're not, if you, if you don't have a um, account, you can, it is free of charge. So you just register, register and sign, and then you sign in once you've registered. And then um, you just click on recipes and you can go to add a recipe. So I've started a recipe. So let me just, um, show you what it looks like if you go when you start a recipe um these won't be like jollof rice it tells that's a step number one the recipe name up the top here it says step number one recipe name so i just added jollof rice which is the rice that i showed you in the powerpoint present presentation um and then the next step it says so you can go to next 
uh, you just click on next, it will tell you to add the photo. Oh, tell, sorry, it tells you what type of dish it is. You just, I just added pasta. There's a, a drop down list and you can choose which one it is. And I added pasta and rice dishes. And then um, you can upload a photo and you can, you can actually um, choose if you want people to be able to create variants um, or you want to allow other users to upload pictures to your um, recipes. You can uncheck that box or whatever. Um, speaking of which, the allow other users to create variants. So remember before when I showed you the PowerPoint pr presentation, I explained to you that you can use Cookie Do as a guide to help you convert recipes. On this, if, if there's no recipe on Cookie Do to help you um, convert a recipe, if there's no recipe that's similar to the one that you're trying to convert, then you can actually come into recipe community and search for those for a recipe there too. Because nine times out of ten, if you don't have anything on Cookie Do, you'll find that recipe here. If you don't have the recipe here, then you'll find it on Cookie Do. Okay, so and then that's where you can actually create a variant. So you see. Um, so the similar recipe, you see what ingredients, if your ingredients are like um, similar or dissimilar, you just add and um, subtract um, the ingredients as you need it. And then you um, follow their preparation steps because then it's easier for you that way if, if, you're, still, if you're just starting out with converting. Okay, so the, the same recipe steps that I showed you in the, um, the same recipe ingredients that I showed you in um, the um, PowerPoint presentation, you just click on that, you click on add ingredient, and then you can put in the your two tomatoes, your half a uh, habanero chili with the stem removed, half a, yeah, and it's a bit weird, you can't go one point, this, that's how you have to put half, half of a, um, 0 0.5 to make it half, and so uh, half a habanero chili, half onion, three red capsicum, uh, 125 grams of vegetable oil, so it's half a cup, um, one half teaspoons of salt all the way so you add and if you need to add more ingredients you just just click the add button there and then when you're done you click save okay so now this is the the fun part yeah the preparation steps okay so this is the part where you guys um are obviously gonna need a bit of help with so again um, the first bit it told us uh, in the other, in the recipe that we use using example of today it told us to add the tomatoes the habanero the onion the red capsicum to um, the uh, mixing bowl so I remember when I showed you the PowerPoint presentation it tells you that you can actually um, not, you can actually um, what's the word um, like don't don't be afraid to reorder recipe steps I said and then also combine steps where possible so this is what I'm doing here in this in step one I'm combining steps and I'm um, reordering steps so the tomatoes the habanero and the onion and the red capsicum and the vegetable oil I'm adding them all at the same time and I'm going to blend it for 15 seconds on speed 10 because I want it to be like a puree okay um, because that's what the recipe um calls for and also when I go into um I, I actually did a YouTube on what jollof rice is meant to look like and so the sauce in the beginning is meant to be like a um like a puree so everything needs I don't know why they in the initial recipe it tells you to take half the mixture out put in the red capsicum and then take the other and then pulse it or and then put it back in so that was just unnecessary steps. I've just added all the tomatoes, the habanero, the onion, the red capsicum and the vegetable oil and to the mixing bowl and um, 15 seconds on speed 10 to make it into a puree. So like a runny liquid rather than um, like chopped dough. Okay, so we, then it tells us, um, you know, with the cookie dough recipes, it always tells you once you've chopped your onions or whatever else to um, scrape down the size of the bowl. So I've just added, I uh, added scrape down the side of the bowl there uh, and then add to, again, I'm mix. I'm combining um, ingredients again, and it's uh, or steps again at least. And I'm adding the um, salt, the curry powder, the cayenne pepper, the garlic, the onion, the bay leaves, ginger, dry thyme to a mixing bowl set. Um, and then it's it's telling me to um, it wants me to boil that um, uh, those ingredients together. So I said ten minutes. Um, 100 degrees Celsius on speed one, or if you that's for team five or team six. But if you're team six, you can actually even use a user. You can even use just the kettle mode, which is this button over there. Um, and the kettle, you can choose 100 degrees, or um, and it will it will stop when it's done boiling. When it's when it's boiling, okay. So you can choose if you want to do 10 minutes, 100 degrees on speed one, or you can do the kettle mode because it boils at 100 degrees. 
Okay, and then the last step, I'm showing you two ways to do this rice um, now. So you can weigh in your rice, the washed rice, um, into the um, mixing bowl, and then you remove the measuring cup, the MC from the lid and replace the simmering basket. So instead of on the um, mixing bowl, um, I'm gonna remove the measuring cup and put the simmering basket on the top to allow for more evapor evaporation because that's what one of, one of the steps said um, in the original recipe because it didn't want it to be too um, liquidy. It wants you to um, um, boil away the, the water. So that's what I'm doing there. So. With the simmering basket, use the rice mode. Um, so for the TM6, if you're a TM6 user, you can actually use the rice mode to cook the rice. Um, alternatively, so that's the, this should have been a step down like this. Okay. So weigh in the rice, remove the measuring cup and replace this with simmering basket. Um, use the rice mode to cook the rice. Alternatively, you can weigh the rice into the simmering basket instead. So weigh the rice into the simmering basket and then you add the lid um on top um and you can keep the measuring cup in there but if you want that evaporation again um because obviously you're using your simmering basket now you can instead of the simmering basket you can place the um what's the other one called the splatter splash guard or splatter guard on the top and that can also allow for the evaporation because there is like um little hole, holes for the um water to uh, evaporate there too um and so it says cook rice 14 minutes, Varoma speed four. And then after the, after the 14 minutes, you stir the rice to ensure even cooking. And then you can cook a further four to eight minutes on Varoma speed four until the rice is cooked to your liking. Um, during that, after the 14 minutes, when checking rice after the first cook, ensure that there's enough liquid in the bowl. Um, so if the rice is too dry, just add water, which is what the original recipe said. Or alternatively, if it's too much liquid, just remove the MC um, to allow more water to evaporate, which is what I've got. Um, and then you click on next, and then you, it just tells you, um, you can add in 10 minutes for the preparation time because that's how long it'll take to get all your ingredients ready. And then 35 minutes is about the time that it'll take to cook. So I'm just added up the 15 seconds plus the 10 minutes plus the 14 minutes and the eight minutes. And it gave me around 30, an approximate of 35 minutes. Um, and if it's um, the rice mode, it could be anything from 35, 35 minutes too. So, um, and then you click next and you can choose um, if it's easy or hard, advanced and go next. And then it's for team six and team five. Or if, you, if your recipe, um, of the team 21 and the team 31 has um, smaller bowl um, capacity than the team five and team six. So for this reason, I only see team five and team six. Next, and then you just choose which dish it, um, it belongs. It's a rice dish. It's an African dish because it's a Nigerian dish. And, um, and then it just tells you, you can just choose which ingre um, sorry, ingredients, which um, accessories you need for this recipe. And then you click next. Any additional tips you can add there. Um, so I could probably copy and paste this bottom where I said when checking rice after first cook, ensure that there's enough liquid in the bowl to add. Water if too dry, or alternatively, if too much liquid, remove measuring cup. I could probably add that in there too. Um, and I can save it as a draft. And then once that is saved, you can actually, um, yeah, down the bottom of your recipes, I'll just go to one of my other recipes because that's just a draft at the moment. Uh, this one. And then you can. Add, go to the bottom and it says add to your cookie do and then that's how you will connect it to your cookie do and you can use it on your cookie do screen that way now i actually spoke for almost half an hour <laughs> and i just ran through um, um these recipes so what i want to do during the next half an hour is if you guys have recipes or you have any questions or you need any help or if i need to if i went too quickly you want me to go over something else then please feel free to um ask me those um, any questions right now or if you've got a recipe right now and you want us to um, to do like a first-hand sort of conversion then I'm happy to do that right now because we have extra time to go and do that so anybody have anything
just trying to see if anybody's got any. Nothing in the chat now. I feel like that was so quickly. <laughs> I went through all this recipe so quickly. Um, I'm just showing you this, um, the one that I'm looking at at the moment. It's a, a Rico Classica, which is um, just something that I grew up with in South Africa. And so it tells, um, it's just pretty much a sauce that you cook in the, and um, prawns or chicken that you're cooking, um, that you would traditionally cook on the stovetop. I've um, cooked it. I've converted it to the thermomix, so just boiling the pasta separately, either on the stove shop, or you can use your um, the egg boiler mode to boil your pasta, or even you can use um, whatever the time say, it says on your um, on the packet for how long the pasta needs to be cooked at, and then um, 100 degrees, and then reverse speed stir, and that should be enough to cook your pasta. I've got questions. Bring the icons for the actions. Okay, so could you uh, explain the icons for the actions? So these, um, are you referring to? Are you referring to these icons down here, um, Sue? The, the these, the bowl and the stir. Okay. Uh, okay. Yep. Sure. So. I'll just close this and I'll Michelle I'll come to your question after so this particular one it means that you need to close the lid of the mixing bowl um and then this this over here is reverse speed so you know how the blade has a sharp side and a blunt side so the sharp side is for chopping uh milling grinding crushing that sort of thing and then the blunt side is for stirring so this is the opposite side so um you'll get that if you're not following a guide, if you, if you are following a guided recipe, it's already automatically set for you. If you're not following a guided recipe, you've got to click on the speed, you know, the one that goes from speed one all the way to speed, well, speed stir all the way to speed 10. If you click on that and you'll make, that means at that, that particular speed, um, the circle, the icon gets bigger. You just click on the blades as at the bottom of the circle and it actually changes the blades to the reverse blade. And then that means um, stirring on the blunt side of the blade. The little spoon stir next to it is when you are, when you again going back to that speed um, speed icon, you start off with a spoon stir, which is a slow stir, and then it's um, 0.5 speed 0.5 one two three four all the way up to speed ten. So that's the speed stir there. I'm gonna go back to the drops and see if there's any other um, in that recipe that I'm. Um, that I've got in my drafts, here yeah, my drafts. And I wanna just see if there's anything in there. Can you see, I've been working on a lot of recipes. <laughs> oh my goodness, um, okay, via recipe. Okay, so I'll just show you other the other icons. We'll go back into preparation step. So that's just bold um, italic and underline for your, um, that sort of thing. But, um, this is the reverse blade that I was telling you about earlier. And then this is no cut. So that's going back from reverse to the normal blade again. That's why it's got a cross um, over the reverse. This is the knead mode. So obviously your dough mode when you're kneading. And then that's the spoon, the gentle stir, which is the spoon stir that I was talking about earlier. That's the closed lid. This is the blend mode. So you know, like a, when you're making smoothies or in, in my case um blending the all these spices into like a pretty much like a li like liquidizing yeah um kettle is just like a normal kettle to boil water or um milk or whatever um, or in this case they to boil the the sauce um warm-up mode pretty much exactly um i call it our our microwave of the thermomix so just warming up things like soups stews baby food that sort of thing um this is the slow cooking mode so you can actually because now with the, with like i mentioned before when you use when you upload this recipe automatically to cookie do you can actually use these functions these functions will come up if you've added these like i've added a blend mode to to this recipe, when I go into the when I've uploaded this recipe to Cookie, do automatically the blend mode will come up when that step is there. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that, um, so the slow cooking mode, 
um, thickening mode, which is like making your gravies, your pastas, that sort of the um, uh, uh, bechamel, that sort of um, um, modes. And then your sous vide is just in the water bath, cooking your um, in the vacuum seal bag and in the fermentation mode. And then uploading images is that. And I've not used that. I think that just means the end of a, end of a step. Um, yep, and that's what that is. Okay. You were touching. Ah, oh, oh, sorry, Michelle. She, Michelle was asking the same question that you were asking. So. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I feel like if you guys give me a recipe or something that you'd like like to do, um, or if you have a question on how you can convert something that you've always wanted to do and you just don't know where to start, um, I'm happy to, to run through that. When I started, like I mentioned before, I used the resources section in the, the basic cookbooks or the, or the basic section in the old book. Um, and then that's how I figured out, okay, cooking or chopping or um, like, for example, milk chocolate, if I wanted coarsely grated and I only want 70 or 100 grams, then you only do it for three to four seconds on speed six. But if you want it finer, then it actually says to you, finely grated, use six to seven seconds on speed eight. So this is why this is the best to start off with, because that's what is going to, that's going to help you with your ingredient. You can choose, you'll find your ingredient in there and then you find how long you want it, um, how fine or coarse you want the ingredient to be chopped or milled or grated or whatever. And then that's how you go from there. Um, let me shape. If I go back to the PowerPoint presentation and see if there's anything I can elaborate on. Oops. Um, yeah, so I, I went through the cooking the book. Um, also, not even cooking the book. If you, if you got, if somebody's bought, um, a second-hand thermos maybe, or, or have lost their thermos. But again, it's your basic cookbook is already saved um, on your thermos anyway. But follow recipes that, um, and when you follow, and, or cook, first of all, cook as much as you can in your thermos, because if the more you practice, obviously practice makes perfect, right? But then secondly, when you are um, doing recipes or following a recipe, a guided recipe, uh, take note of the steps. So I know I blindly, if I'm following a guided recipe, like I mentioned before, I'm just so used to it, just read the step and, and you know, go next, 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 next. But actually pay attention to the, the time and the speed or the temperature so you know that eventually when you want to convert the recipe, that's how, that, uh, for that ingredient, I need that time, that temperature, that speed, that sort of thing. Um, again, searching cooking for similar recipes. Um, like this, if I think about the jollof recipe that I just showed you how to convert right now, there is a recipe called nasi tomato, which is an Indonesian or Malaysian um, rice. It's called tomato rice, nasi tomato, which is tomato rice, which is probably, now that I'm thinking about it, would probably have similar ingredients and would definitely have similar steps on how to, um, to cook it. So the recipe that I... Um, converted today, I could possibly have gone to Cookie Do, seen the steps in um, uh, for that nasi tomato recipe, and then just use those steps, but using the ingredients in the jollof rice recipe. So that sort of thing. Um, again, I, like I mentioned before, you can go to Cookie Do or Recipe Community. And Recipe Community is free. Uh, there's no charge to it. So go there whenever you want, uh, use whatever. Um, uh, whenever you have time going to recipe community and have a look at what recipes um, are available. There are actually amazing recipes on there. Um, yeah, so it's asking a question. Uh, how did you know that you needed 10 minutes to boil? Uh, because generally when I worked it out <laughs> previously, I know that 10 minutes um, in the, around about 10 minutes is the boiling temperature for, um, uh, not really water, but um, yeah, sometimes water depends on how cold the water is, but 
um, there was ingredient, there was, um, it's veggies and stuff that are boiling. Half the time, whenever I've checked, I've always seen that it was 10 minutes. And that's why I say trial and error. So again, practice makes perfect. You'll, you'll realize it um, as you go along. But yeah, 10 minutes is usually the cutoff for, for boiling um, when you get to boiling temperature with, um, with especially sauces. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it seems daunting when you think about it initially. Um, it does seem a bit overwhelming because you don't know where to start, but it's just um, trying to see things differently now. Because I mean, cooking traditionally, you just go chop and do this. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, it's a bit, it's, it's just reordering things and thinking things like in a different way. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is the easiest part. The, um, uh, now, um, I know it seems hard now, but initially, um, eventually, sorry, once you get used to it, it will become way easier than what it is right now. Um, trying to think. Okay, and then again, um, I, making sure never to exceed maximum capacity. So I do tend to push the boundaries. <laughs> the only thing I would um, uh, recommend you not when not to push the boundaries is when you're using liquid so in this case because it is um there's a lot of liquid in this recipe the one that i just converted the jollof rice recipe um i would never ever go over the two liter mark but if you're doing things like um look at the vegetable stock for example i sometimes add lots of ingredients to it because once it's cooked down it actually goes to half of the um the mixing bowl um, capacity. It's not all the way up to the two liter mark or 2.2 liter mark uh, because you've blended it and you've cooked it down. Um, so, so things like that uh, where there's veggies and you're chopping things down and it becomes less than that's okay to push the boundaries, but don't push boundaries when it comes to liquids. It's never because if you go over maximum and it cooks, obviously with cooking, it's gonna boil over and then it's gonna go all over the outside of your thumbs and you don't want that to happen. Um, just trying to think what else I can, what else I can give you. I was saying to the ladies, it's so, I'm so fast at doing it now that it's so hard to actually explain it unless I'm actually doing it with somebody. So that's why if anybody does have a recipe to share right now, I'm happy to do it right now to show you guys how to, um, to do it. Actually, let's do that. Let's actually look at it. Let me see if I can find a recipe. Anything. It doesn't have to be food. It can be um, cake. It could be, which, which is probably the easiest one. Cake is so easy because you literally throw all the ingredients in the bowl most times. And then you, um, once you throw all the ingredients in the bowl, you just mix it up. And it's usually 30 seconds speed for if you're using the, the butterfly whisk. Um, because with cake, you don't want to over whisk the, the batter. If you over whisk the batter, um, certain recipes, um, you get like these air bubbles in your cake um, and you don't want that to happen. Um, okay, um, going back to don't be afraid to reorder recipe steps. I'm just trying to see what I've written down for um, to remind me. Okay, so for um, I showed you earlier about the, if it's, if a recipe tells you to peel the onions and then chop the onions, um, and then while you're do doing that, go and um, cook that. And while that's cooking, then peel the potatoes. I said to you, peel the potatoes first, and then uh, once that's done, empty out your um, the contents of the bowl, and then uh, wash and dry your bowl, and then chop your onions and cook your onions, and then add your garlic, blah, blah, blah. That's what I was saying. But, um, if you have a recipe like cake, for example, and you've got dry ingredients and you've got um, wet ingredients, or if it's food and it needs to roast the spices first, which is dry ingredients, and then adding the wet ingredients to it, then yeah, always try and do the dry ingredients first, then the wet, because if you have the wet ingredients, then you're gonna have to empty out the contents of the bowl and then wash and dry your bowl and then put the dry ingredients on and roast or do whatever um, it needs the dry ingredients to do. So. Yeah, so uh, when, when I'm saying um, don't be afraid to reorder recipes, do the dry stuff first. So add the dry ingredients first or spices or, or flour and sugar and 
aerate that if that's what the, um, the recipe asks for. So when I say aerate, so you know some recipes start to just sift your, your flour. And so in the thermix, I just chuck everything in there and just do the, um, the uh, like a couple of spins of my um, blade to, to sift the flour. Um, and so you do that first and then you follow, the, um, chuck that out. Um, remove it from the bowl and then add the wet ingredients and then add the flour when it's necessary to add it or when the step wants you to add it. Um, there was something else that I had in the, that I actually wanted to mention about that and I totally forgot. Um, oh, also things like when you're milling um, raw sugar into icing sugar or caster sugar, those are all dry ingredients first. You do that first before you do um, anything else. And again, with that, um, you need a completely dry bowl so um, obviously you've got to um, make sure that, yeah, that's done first. And, and raw sugar to icing sugar is, um, it's always speed 10. So there's just these things you just remember because a lot of the recipes has it and because you use it so often, you know, okay, speed 10 needs to, that's how you melt your raw, raw sugar into icing sugar. And about one, one minute is perfectly um, milled about 100 grams of raw sugar. Um, just consulting my notes again. Yeah, this, I, I have no idea what else to, um, to share with you ladies. And we're at 8.14, so we've got 15 minutes to spare. So honestly, feel free to come and ask me any questions you have. So we still have 15 minutes left <laughs> of time. Um, I'll show you this. Um, so one, two, three, four. That was four steps of this um, re recipe when you're doing it the traditional way. And when you're doing it in the thermomix, the way I've, but I've added, it's also, I've, it's meant to be three steps because I added the scrape down the sides of the bowl. So it's, yeah, you actually, you're saving time doing it this way too, because it's just um, adding all the ingredients at one, the step, the tomatoes, the onions and all of that in one step, and then scraping down the bowl and then adding all the spices and cooking it. And then, yeah, just weighing in the rice and then cooking the rice. Yeah, I don't know what else to tell you, ladies. <laughs> Please uh, feel free to come off uh, mute or to ask me any questions. But if you don't have any questions, then then that's our, our workshop done tonight. Um, Kate will be doing the how to con um, how to add the recipe to your um, recipe community. So if I just go into any of these recipes, oh, actually I can show you one more thing, one more thing. This recipe, you can actually uh, portion each part of the recipe into different things. So this is the filling of the recipe, of this recipe. And then it's got the pastry, which is the outer, and then it's got the um, syrup and then the flour paste to seal the edges. So you can actually put, you, you don't have to have all the ingredients in one go. If your recipe has different um, sections to it, so like in this case, it's got different parts of, uh, to the recipe, then you can actually um, group them into different uh, parts um, like that. And again, you just click on add to cookie dough and it, then it connects to your cookie dough. Um, but Kate's gonna go into detail with that next week. And Kate's also gonna talk about um, cookie dough, how to, you can either upload a recipe, this recipe is directly from recipe community to cookie do, or you can um, update, um, just in cook, within cookie do itself, just add the recipe straight there instead of add, doing it here first and then doing it into cookie do. Okay, someone's asking a question. Move one of those symbols to get a thermo to do that action. Um, so within, in recipe community, this one, you, you're gonna put your steps in like this and it just, you say heat five minutes, like I didn't add any of those symbols there. I just added, I just said five minutes, 60 degrees speed one. But uh, when it's in cookie dough, 
the you'll see next week the screen comes up and it shows you and you can actually automatically set it uh, uh, these steps would automatically come up if you if you set it up like this five minutes so time temperature and speed automatically it will be set there for you um and um, Kate will show you that next week how that works but if you're just going to follow this manually you can just read off your off this um, um, screen and you can just set it manually on the screen on your thermic screen time temperature and speed so five minutes 60 degrees speed one but yeah Kate, uh, Kate's going to run through the adding this recipe to cookie do automatically from here as well as directly from cookie do um, instead of doing it into this area into this um, community page first. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think if that's all the questions tonight, then we um, and that's about it. One of those symbols. Um, yep. So um, the symbols for the coming back to the symbols one, the symbols will. Um, if you put the symbols in here, automatically it will come on your Thermomix when you upload it to, um, when you add it to Cookie Do. Uh, but if you don't put it in automatically, if you, it will tell you time, tem yeah, your time, temperature and speed will be added um, there for you. As long as you've set this all up already, it's just easier to copy and paste than to actually do it on Cookie Do. That's why most people go through recipe community first before they add it to Cookie Do. Yep. So that's all for tonight, ladies. Then we 10 minutes, well, 11 minutes earlier than um, the time we um, were meant to end. We meant to end at 8.30. It's 8.20 now. So um, yeah, if, you, if no one has any other questions, then have a good night and enjoy your weekend. Hi, it's Beth. I just want to say thank you very much. You're welcome, Beth. Thank you. I hope you guys learned something. <laughs> I feel a bit like I was speaking to myself all the time. I hope you learned something. Thanks, Beth, for Thank coming. You. You're welcome. You're welcome, Sue. Just stop recording. Oh, good. Good, Alice. I'm glad you're going to look in the book. Awesome. Stop recording.